our reading today, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. They separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, I asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Thurgia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libra near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. And from John chapter 20, verse 19 to verse 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And finally, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, Reading to verse 7, and then starting again at verse 12 and verse 13. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its parts form for one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or three. And we were all given the same spirit to drink. This is the word of God. And God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We all know this. The wind blows where it will. It cannot be seen. Yet we have no doubt that the wind is there. We can feel the summer breeze and we appreciate its warmth. Until even in the so-called warmer months it turns from the south and we scurry back indoors. The wind blows. We don't see it, but we can see that it shapes trees and landscape. And it changes the mood and outlook. The wind blows and it carries seeds that will eventually settle and germinate, bringing new growth, new life. The same wind blows and destruction can be the result. In the Old Testament, the words for wind and for breath and for spirit are used interchangeably. It is no wonder then that the coming of the Spirit of God in Acts 2 comes with the sound of a mighty wind. Many, when they heard the sound, gathered wondering what was going on. These people who knew their scripture, they listened intently. As Peter began to speak, 
and they were amazed. For not just Peter, but they heard everyone speaking. And they were amazed that they could understand. These Galileans, because they heard their own languages being spoken. And that is a miracle in itself. And they were amazed even more because not only could they understand, but the teaching that they heard. And they began to recognize that God was at work. The Spirit of God transformed the disciples. And that same Spirit was now transforming those who heard them speak these Spirit-inspired words. Now in John, the Spirit is also given. Yet not with a mighty wind, but with a strong breath. Clearly this is pre-COVID days because Jesus breathes on his disciples and they receive the Holy Spirit. And this is so reminiscent of that first breath when God breathed into the first man, Adam. And as he breathed the breath of life, Adam was given life. Wherever the gift of the Spirit is given, whether it's in Acts or in John, or even in Genesis, the way the Spirit is received is not, import, is not important. What is important is that it is the promised presence of God the Spirit that now, that now works powerfully through those who receive. You know, at times we read or hear these stories and we think, oh, I wish it was like that now. Or what I wouldn't give to have been there to receive the Spirit in such a powerful way. Such marvellous experiences would have enlivened my faith. With that, with that experience, that power, <laughs> I would surely be bold and I would surely be able to serve others. <clears throat> Yet Paul reminds us that we do not have to have received the Spirit at this time or in this way but that the Spirit of God is available to all who love the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God has come to us. Maybe it was in a powerful, mighty way, but more often like breathing. And as Paul says, to each of us, the Spirit is given for the common good. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts. There are different forms of service, different works. But there's one Spirit. And today it is for each of us to give thanks that the Spirit of God is with us who love Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is with us who have placed our trust in him, who declare him as our Lord and Saviour and who now follow him. It is now for us to discover how the Spirit of God will work with us on this day. It is now for us to use the gifts that we have been given for the common good. It is now for us to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with our words, our attitude, our actions, our lifestyle. And as we do so, to rely upon the Spirit of God who is present with us. That these words, that these actions that we now live that they may be taken from us, just like seeds are taken by the wind, and that they may find a home in the hearts of those who need to hear, who need to recognise, who need to receive. I pray today that as you follow Jesus, you will live in confidence, you will walk boldly, you will live faithfully and sincerely, and you will proclaim in boldness and in power the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as you do so, may your words, may your actions, may your life tell the story of faith. And may those words and may those actions resonate and find a home in the hearts of those who our God has chosen. May the Lord be with you today.
as you continue to serve him and to honor him and to bless him in all of your ways. May the Lord be with you and bless you and empower you. And the people of God say, Amen.